Hi, this is Jazz Obrecht, and welcome to my Talking Guitar podcast featuring the second hour of my Marathon 1980 interview with Eddie Van Halen. If you haven't already heard it, you might want to listen to the first hour of this interview, which is posted on YouTube as Eddie Van Halen, The Complete 1980 Interview, Tape 1. The interview you are about to hear takes up where that one leaves off. I'm delighted to report that, like on the first tape, Eddie played a lot of unamplified Frankenstrat during our second hour together. Other highlights include Eddie talking about how he got kicked out of school in ninth grade, the appeal of working alongside his brother Alex and bassist Mike Anthony, and the disadvantages of being a so-called rock star. He delves into how he records in the studio, how the movement of his body is tied into his playing, and how performing on stage is like having sex. Eddie talks about his admiration for Alan Holdsworth, what he looks for in a solo, and his favorite of his own solos. He discusses his amplifiers and effects, and elaborates on how he boils strings before he installs them on his guitar, how the band tunes down a quarter step, and the pros and cons of tuning a guitar all in fourths. His playing throughout this second hour is, in a word, exhilarating. Without any further ado, Here's tape two. I hope you enjoy it. I hate feeling normal all the time. Yeah, I do too. You know, every kid in the world doesn't want to look, feel normal all the time. That's why they come to see us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, though, when you were when you were thinking about being in a band before you were in one, I like, never like, wanted like to be a band. rock star. Okay, I always wanted to be. I, I still have a report. See, I got kicked out of school in ninth grade for pot. I got expelled from the whole passing school district, so I had to go to continuation, and uh, you know, it's like a reform school <laughs> where all the dope addicts and the bums go. <laughs> And there's innocent little Ed amongst all these gangsters, you know. And uh, <laughs> what was the point I was trying to make? That you were a bad kid. I was I definitely a rock, rock star. Oh yeah, you know, I had an English class. We had to do an essay on what do you, what, what's your future plans? What do you want to do in life? Uh -huh. I said I want, to, I want to be a professional guitarist, not a rock guitarist. Yeah. Or a rock guitarist, but not a rock star. Yeah. Because. What is a rock star? It's a mystical image of what kids... I mean, I'm a rock star because the kids... Make that's what you, they label me as. Yeah. That's why I kind of hate going out and partying and playing the part of a rock star. Because I don't know how a rock star is supposed to act. Yeah. If I act too normal, they go, oh, that's him? That's all he is? And if I act too, like, hey, I'm a bitching rock star, they go, oh, he's the fucker's ego down. So, you know. I don't show my it, face too much. It, is it, what are the disadvantages of it? The disadvantages of being a rock star is your private life is ruined, mm -hmm. but your sex life increases. What do you think when you hear other guys using your licks? Uh, I guess what they always, the old term is, uh, what is it? Somebody copying you is flattery. What is it? I guess flattery. Imitation, Imitation is a form of flattery. Yeah. Which I think is a crock of shit. I mean, it is, but depending on who's doing it. Yeah. And if they're doing it exactly like me, I mean, like I'm not. I'm not saying that the technique that I use. Some of the things I know, no one's done before. Yeah. You know, like the harmonic thing, and the the clock chime like sound. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that before. Yeah. And like eruption solo, I've never heard it done like that. But I know. That someone must have figured out going my hand and using this finger to do it. Yeah. But no one's done it to the extent that I have. You know? And like I told told you over the phone, there's Rick Derringer and Tom Schultz both doing it right after I did it. Yeah. And instead of you instead of innovating on what I came up with, they're doing my trip. Yeah. They're doing my melody. And I got pissed. Yeah. I understand. You know, there's a difference between like, I mean, I learned from Clapton, Page, Hendrix, Beck, but I don't play like them. Mm -hmm. You know, I innovated, I learned from them and did my own thing out of it. 
these motherfuckers are doing my thing which is I think a lot of difference yeah is your playing progressing always do you think I don't think it's ever progressed it just gets weirder all the time yeah do you ever get I mean how, how much can you progress I'm as fast as I can possibly get almost yeah or, or almost. you know it's, it sounds wrong I know it's gonna sound wrong on tape but I mean I can't picture myself being too much faster for what reason we can only go to little, little, little. people can only hear so much anyway exactly but but you don't have to become faster you yeah become so different so right and that's what I'm trying to do is being weirder and different do you ever get in slumps uh yes and no um you always reach a plateau mm -hmm. you know and then getting out of that is a bit tough but uh for me it's not that hard how do you do it continue to play just play your way through just it. play and play and uh try different chops you know mm -hmm. it's like it's especially hard for me after touring for 10 months and playing the same songs now depending on the the beat of the song i play different too mm -hmm. you know yeah i'm a very rhythmically oriented guitarist i mean yeah. i really work off the rhythm yeah and uh, if the song is do -do 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 fast, I play it a certain way. If I play a blues, I'll play completely different. Mm -hmm. So if we do the same set for almost a whole year, you get into a rut of that style. And it takes me a month or two to, to change, to come up with new things. Yeah. You know, which that, that's my rut. Has seeing anybody ever inspired a, a change in your playing? Alan Holdsworth. Yeah. Motherfucker is bad. <laughs> Have you ever played jam with him? No. Yeah. He's a real proper subdued Englishman. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like the bullshit, doesn't like to shoot the shit, real quiet guy. Yeah. But I've met so many other people. Like Rick Nielsen is so funny. He's such a nice guy. Yeah, he I is. I love the guy. He? I'll sit on stage. Like you know, the guy I'll... next door. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's fucking uh, Hunt Hall, you know, whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, 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 right. He's, he's great, Sash. you know. The comedians of rock and roll, where his kiss or, or the, the circus of rock and roll. Yeah. And uh, that's What's... the reason I think we're happening is because we're the only real band out there. We're not punk. We yeah. don't dress weird. We play good music, you know, or at least I think so. Half the asshole critics think it's thud rock bullshit. Thud <laughs> rock. rock. Well, you know. That's a new one. I mean, they label us heavy metal old hat. Name me a heavy metal band that's done what we've done. Yeah. Or, you know, see, you know, I sound like I'm bragging, but I don't mean it that way. Look I'm, I'm just saying that we have used, you know, I'm not saying all the riffs I come up with are fucking genius brand new riffs. But neither is punk. Yeah. I mean, punk's like what I used to do in a garage. Which, what, what you got that's different besides licks is the sound of the guitar. It's so different on your, on your records from other records, you know? Which is actually not a studio thing. Mm -hmm. It's just my guitar and my amp. It comes from me. Yeah. Like just the other day, um, I overdubbed a 12-string guitar on one of these songs, and uh, uh, it didn't sound right through my amp. And I asked Ted, I said, can you doctor it up later in the mix? And then I said, forget it. I want to make it sound good out of my amp before it's recorded. Yeah. Because I hate the fact that, oh, we'll fix it in the mix, or uh, checks in the mail shit, you know? Yeah. I mean, my theory is if it doesn't sound good coming out of that speaker box, it ain't going to happen on tape. Yeah. Any talking about love? How many tracks did you use for your guitar on that song? Uh, two. I did. I soloed on the on the basic track, and if you listen real closely, I overdubbed the solo with an electric sitar. You like choral electric sitar? And that's that whole bit is that's the bit that's played on the B string. Yeah. That's so. Yeah. Well, it's gonna... it's guitar too, but very yeah. faintly underneath it is an electric sitar. Oh. Which the fuck thing wouldn't stay in tune at all, man. So did you borrow it off somebody? Oh, I just got it from, uh, what you call it, SIR. Uh huh. Um, and I'm the one. You do, uh, that was do you the first use side of the pick harmonics? <laughs> How do you do that? At one point in the song. 
can't. I got. I really have to warm up. So yeah. I really play good. But. I can't play on that. Yeah. Do you ever? Do you ever? Do you ever use the side of your picks to get the high pitched harmonic? Yeah, sometimes. Uh huh. I've written down a couple of them. What song are we just talking about? I'm the one. I'm the one. That's how I do that. Uh-huh. Yeah, all right. You got a real gentle touch with the vibrato. Yeah. I'm... You, do you have it set up so you don't have to move it more in an inch or two, huh? Well, it depends. How, I like to use it for... Mm -hmm. It's more of a feeling as opposed to an effect. Yeah. I don't. I don't really use it for freak out effect. I use it for to enhance a little more feeling, as opposed to just always going. You know. Yeah. Instead yeah. of just playing fast all the time. Yeah. You see. Because I really the started about doing you want that. To be like a race car. And you got to crash once. Oh, I used to. Yeah. yeah. Mention that in there. I will. <laughs> That's one of the best quotes of them all. You know, I used. To, <laughs> it's like I'm a race car driver, and every now and then I got to crash. <laughs> you know. Um. At the end, I'm I'm the one. How do you control your uh, feedback? Uh, you remember at the very end. I walk right up to my amp. Just like, wah, 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 wah. Boom. That's it, huh? Yeah. Just uh, you know, f like the end of Atomic Punk too. That. Uh... Yeah. In Atomic Punk, you know, you have that real scratchy sound. Oh yeah. That's, How do you do that? That's you... with the phase shifter going. What are you doing? It's rubbing the string. With the side of your hand? The palm. Right here. The palm of your hand. Oh, she's on oh. like, If I got calluses right there. From do, doing that. You don't use the pick at all, huh? No. And you're doing it, you do it right over the pickup? No, right by the bridge. You do that? I did it again on this record. I'll play it for you. Uh-huh. That's an interesting effect. Yeah, you know, I, I just love doing weird things. Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of things no one's done, I guess. Uh-huh. But they're stupid. <laughs> Um, so simple. Yeah, but they get the sound. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's all I care about. But it's so stupidly simple, you know? Like, I, I really do best when I don't think about anything. Yeah. I seriously do. Like, if I sit down right now and say, make up something new, forget it. Yeah. You know, I just have to go home and... You're screwing around. I just take around and say, hey, whoa, what's this? You know, like you came up with this. Uh-huh. You know, which I ain't never seen no one do. So, describe what you're doing. You're reaching. It's actually like this being there. You're like barring. So you reach behind and you bar with your right hand and hammer with your left hand. Yeah. You can do anything. You know? And that frees the rest of them up. You really do play like with six fingers that way. Yeah. When you're picking now, when you're holding a pick, how do you hold it? Like that. Just between the thumb and the middle finger? Yeah. And this one sometimes right there. The tip of your index finger on the corner of it? If I play fast, it's like this. We got to get Neil to do a close-up picture of that. Do you ever use your other fingers to pick? It's no. all in one side. Use it. You know, yeah. I'm not nothing. Yeah. I can't finger pick for shit. Really? <laughs> I've never had. Did you, you know. use a pick for Spanish fly? Yeah. Except for when I got to this part. Yeah. It's a real angelic sound or something. Sounds like Montoya or something. Yeah, know? yeah. Lee Rittenauer wrote about that song in one of his columns about doing that.
What do you mean? You wrote right. about the song? You wrote about the fact that you, you, more or less, that you came up with it and you do it on that song. Oh, yeah? You talked about how to do it. Yeah, it was I'm real sure. good. I'll send, you, I'll send you a copy of it. Shit, I'd appreciate it if you send me everything. I can't wait. Was that solo spontaneous? Yes. I can't wait to see you left tonight. I can still remember, probably. Go. Yeah, let them think. How's the solo start? When you when you play when you're playing uh, when you go in the studio, are you uh, how ready are you? Uh, we're ready with the structure of the song. Mm -hmm. That's about it. So you maybe jam through it a few times? In the basement. Mm -hmm. As soon as we go in the studio, the main thing we always dick with is, I mean, I just told Ted, just put a fucking mic up to my amp, let's get going. Yeah. You know, and they're always dicking around with mic space direct and mixing it with the yeah. direct and the, and the speaker mix and now snare tone and this and that, you know. Yeah. And I really get sick of that because I'm just sitting there ready to go. Yeah. Like, come on, come on, while I feel like playing. <laughs> you know, after four cups of coffee and a bottle of wine, I don't feel like playing anymore. And then they go, come on, let's go, we're ready. You know. Yeah. So you're never really sure what you're going to do? Solo wise, no. Yeah. Have you ever thought of doing direct to disc record? That's uh, kind of what you're I wouldn't mind. You're moving but, towards doing. Uh, we're very live. We record very live. Yeah. You know, except the only thing I think that wouldn't work on direct to disc would be vocals. Mm hmm. Because I don't see, I see, I stand right next to my brother when I play. I don't use headphones, neither does he. Mm hmm. And uh, when you play direct to disc, how could I sing? Yeah. Playing at that volume. Yeah. Unless I play in a booth separate. Yeah. Then, then I just wouldn't get the vibe of playing with my brother and feeling it. Yeah. You know? When you were growing up and coming up and learning how to play, did you did your brother jam along with you on drums ever? Actually, I started playing drums first. Yeah. I used to have paper out, you know, and I bought myself wipeout. Is this when you had the? Oh yeah. You know, I love that song. <laughs> I said, "Shit, I'm going out and buy myself a hundred twenty-five dollars St. George drum set." Yeah. So I got a paper out, you know, to pay for it. And while I'm out throwing the paper, Sunday morning, <laughs> five in the morning, in the rain, with a <laughs> bicycle with the flat tires, my really? brother practicing my drums, and he got better. So I said, "Fuck you, take my drums." Is that when you got your Tesco Del Rey? Yeah. <laughs> I used to think, man, the more pickups, the better. <laughs> and look what I got now: one pickup, one knob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I laugh myself silly, silly at some of these guys, man. They get. Four out of phase switches and, the, and a this and a that and a bi amp crossover, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> and I just go, is it on? Is it working? No, what's it, what's it for? What does it do? <laughs> I can't tell. It's like these guys that have a $5,000 rack and you can't yeah. even hear it. You can't I can't even fuck, hear it. Not, I cannot tell. I mean, I squeeze more noises out of the limited garbage shit that I use than anyone I've seen with their studio effects. Yeah. I mean, not to sound ego down or bragging, but at least when I use a fact, you know I'm using it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Are there who are the players you like to listen to? Alan Oldsworth. Yeah. That motherfucker is fantastic. Yeah. I love him. He's got, he's got a rock sound. On UK, the first album yeah. in the Dead of Night. I yeah. love the solo on that. Uh, Hell's Bells on uh, One of a Kind. Uh -huh. Bill Bruford. He yeah. plays hot on that album. Oh, man. I love him. He's the best in my book. Yeah. I love the. I mean, I can kind of play like him, you know, but it doesn't fit our style of music. Uh huh. You know. But he's a real artist. Like I went and saw Bruford at the Roxy, you know, hoping that Alan would be with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked, you know, I know Bruford kind of. And he said, no, you know, Alan, he just likes to play. He doesn't like the tour. He doesn't like the whole business bullshit. He just enjoys playing. Yeah. Didn't Which, they open up for you one time? Yeah. And they bombed. Oh, too bad. I know. With their music, the audience didn't understand their music. Their music, you know, I mean, what was that first song they started out with? In the dead of night, the beat goes. 
<laughs> and it goes dun 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 dun. It's off beat, you know. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I love the stuff to listen to myself. Yeah. yeah. But like, even the rest of you guys in the band, you know, <laughs> they, they, they hate it. They go, don't listen to that shit. Man. You're going to start getting influenced and start writing weird shit. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I get off on it just because it's, to me, it's music. Yeah. I mean, I, I get so sick of it, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> anyone can do that. Shit. Anyone can do yeah. that. Yeah. You know why? Why? What's the use? Yeah. It's been done a million times over. Still, they're cranking it out. Yeah. It just doesn't get me off. Yeah. The only thing I can get off on is that type of stuff. Dessert. But it holds worth. Yeah. Because I've listened to all other kinds of jazz guitars too, but who are very competent, and very good. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the feel, and they don't. They just don't get me off. You like to listen to old blues guys ever? Uh, I haven't anymore mm -hmm. because it's kind of like too basic now. Yeah. You know, I still listen to it now and then just get that feel back. But it's like, that's what I've learned from and listening to it again, it's just like, yeah, that's what I learned from. Yeah. As opposed to, wow, this is something that really gets me off. Yeah. I still get off on it. But what I'm trying to say is it's not, it doesn't really make me go, whoa. Yeah. Like Holdsworth makes me go, whoa. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you know, I mean, you should see the guy. Have you ever met him? No. You know, I love He plays music. guitar exactly like mine, too. I trip. Oh, uh, really? He's got a strap with uh, one, two pickups in it. Yeah. Actually. And he's like, Brian, where's the thing up to here? <laughs> you know? And he looks like a real dork, you know? <laughs> Don't say that. Man. I won't. Because I, I love the guy. You he's won't so, insult anybody. He's so either. good, you know? He's so fucking good, but he plays his thing up the air. Yeah. You know, and I could do all that shit too if I played up the air, but how would a rock yeah. and roll kid look with a guitar or look like a <laughs> jazz guitar? <laughs> you know? His neck. I mean, I, I do have to sacrifice sometimes the amount of movement I do on stage for the way I play. Yeah. I might play much better sitting on a stool. Oh, really? Fuck yeah. Do you sit on a stool in the studio? No, because then it would sound like I'm sitting on a stool. Oh, yeah. You know. Is the movement of your body tied in with your playing a lot? Definitely. Yeah? Definitely. 100%. I never do anything the same. Yeah. I have no, no choreographed steps where I have to be here in this part of the song. Yeah. I'm wherever I want and do whatever I want whenever I feel. When you play, do you, do you ever repeat solos from night to night? Mm. Or do you change it around? I rarely repeat. Uh -huh. I sometimes I remember the the way I did it on the record and kind of follow it. Uh huh. Unless it's a melodic solo. Yeah. Like you, uh, not you really got me, but uh, Run Up the Devil's a melodic solo. Yeah. People gradually hum along with it. You know? Yeah. yeah. And he talking about love. You know, if I start noodling around on that, they're going, hey, that ain't the same song. <laughs> Are there songs you, you stretch out on more in, in concert? Like the band knows that you... Feel Your Love Tonight. I Can't Wait to Feel Your Love Tonight. Yeah. Um, uh, my guitar solo, definitely. You Really Got Me. What else? I can't think right now. Yeah, that's all right. Because we do like an hour and a half show, you know, we do a lot of tunes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do a lot of jams. You really got me as a long jam. We start doing the thing where it goes, you know, after after the noise, after so, yeah, and we just start going. Oh, you just start jamming on that. That's like a almost like a James Brown chord. But but Al, you know, it sounds yeah. heavy as shit. <laughs> oh wait, it's an A. When you're playing on stage, what do you think about? Nothing. Nothing? It's like having sex, actually. It's like what? Having sex. Yeah? Hey, man, when I'm playing, I'm going... <laughs> you're making it with the guitar. Yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> it, it's definitely my first love. Yeah. I had a fight with my girlfriend before. 
I used to go over to her house and play my guitar in her bedroom. <laughs> you know, and she'd go, you love your fucking guitar more than, I do, than you do me? And i go, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. It's part of me, you know. How many times a day can, will you pick up a guitar? All the time. Sometimes I play it for a minute, sometimes half an hour, sometimes all day. You just, could you pick There's it no up? There's no schedule. Any I don't work by schedules at all. Uh, usually before I go to sleep, when I wake up, when I come home, I'm bored. Mm -hmm. There's no, no set schedule with at all. With the amp or without? Uh, what I use at home is a little old white bandmaster. Uh -huh. uh, and I take it not into the regular output, but the external output, mm -hmm. so you can crank it all the way up and it fuzzes out. It's actually like a uh, full, full volume. You get the tube distortion, it sounds real good. But you, you know, it, uh, like a Marshall has two outputs, but you can use either one and you get full uh -huh. output. Yeah. With a, a Fender, you have a main output. And if you want the second output to work, the first one has to be plugged in. Yeah. And if you bypass the first one, just plug it in the external output, you get a real low signal but you get the same sound uh, as if you plugged into the main one. Yeah. Now you blow a transformer every eight months, yeah. but it's worth it. Yeah. Know? It sounds great, that's what I use at home. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. You know, I'm on fire. Yeah. In the beginning, give you have your flange on? Your phaser? No. right now the neck's out of adjustment yeah i can take the neck and bring it up uh -huh. this way so the strings don't pop on actually i played on fire on a, on a destroyer Now what's that? What's that? Harmonics. But those you're holding is you're holding the, the strings to the fret, aren't you? No. No. Just looks like. It sounds like a machine. Yeah. It's not really like. Yeah. Wait, then we're coming out now. There you go. And this solo is so funny. <laughs> we were playing it. And I wanted to do melodic solo, and the guy goes, fuck you, man. Just, <laughs> they go, pretend like you're John McLaughlin, you know? So then the solo comes up. Yeah, you did a chordal solo on that. No. No? I don't even know what key I'm playing in. <laughs> I just go up the, up the thing. Keys that in. <laughs> no, five or six the guy just told me, pretend like you were John McLaughlin. So I just started playing it. And it fit. You know? Oh my God. It fit perfect. So I said, what the fuck? Might as well do it. That, you know, that's how everything works. It's totally spontaneous. Yeah. It's not like I said, Here's what, this. I'm going to start here and end up there. What do you think it happened? What do you look for in a solo? What do you think it should do? Feeling. Period. Period, huh? Yeah. I don't care if it's melodic or spontaneous. If it's melodic and has no feeling, it's fucked. Yeah. What do you think a good rock and roll song should do? Move you in any way. Depress you, make you happy, make you horny, make you rowdy, anything. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it's like Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. It's getting well. I mean, Fleetwood Mac. I love Rumors. That album. That's a hot album. That's a hot fucking album. Yeah. They got a two chord song too. You know. Uh, what is that one? Uh, Stevie Nicks sings. Yeah. Oh uh, shit. You know, but that's a beautiful song. It's a yeah. two chord song, just like. <laughs> you know.
I don't know, I've written so many songs and just never end up on record. Yeah. Is that frustrating? Not really. Mm -hmm. Do you play them for anybody? Half the time, no. Because I know what the guys like and what they don't. Mm -hmm. And I wrote one, so. How often do you meet with the band when you're off the road? Oh, your brother, you live with him, but with uh, Roth and uh, Michael. Roth a lot. Mike, not too often. Mm -hmm. His bass parts really are subdued compared to what you do. Or they're, they're not mixed as high or something. Yeah. You really have to listen carefully to hear him. Yeah, oh, he's a damn good bass player, though. Uh -huh. I mean, he plays bass. He, he's not a Jack Bruce. He doesn't play guitar on bass. He plays bass, uh -huh. you know. It's really, it's really your ideal accompaniment when you think about it. Hey, when Al and Mike are, are playing, I can, um, it's an open world for me. I can do whatever I want. Uh -huh. and they're, they're right there backing me up, uh -huh. feeding me, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, if he was Jack Bruce, I'd be in, got in competition with him. Yeah. Where it you isn't. Need that. Every, everyone is hot, but in their own pocket. Yeah. You know? And a lot of it does have to do with the mix on record, whereas live it comes off much better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or much more powerful. That's why I kind of like it. Yeah. Because most bands sound like hell live and great on record. I think we sound good on record, but better live. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm totally happy with our record. Yeah. You know? Uh, but live comes off better. Yeah. How do you warm up before you go on stage? Just scales. Fast scales? Well, not fast. Just like, depends on how cold my fingers are. Yeah. You do the same thing in the studio? Do you put on new strings every night? Yeah. What kind? Uh, Fender 150XLs or something like that. Do you stretch them out? Yeah, I stretch them to death. Would you put them on and with, yank with, them with a that couple thing, times? With that thing, you have to boil them. With that new guitar? With the Rose thing? Yeah. You have to boil the strings so they stretch. Because otherwise, if you tune it, you clamp it down, the string stretches out. What do you, you to toss the, the strings in a pot of water? You take a whole pack, put it on a boiler, let it boil for 20 minutes. In it? Yeah, in the hot, in hot water, in no boiling shit. water. Yeah. And then you should actually put it in a microwave so it dries quick, but I just do it in the sun, because otherwise they rust. Uh huh. But I only use them one night anyway, so who gives a fuck if they rust. Does anyone take care of your guitars besides you? Uh, Rudy. Are you, Rudy Laren is my roadie. How, what's his last name? Laren. L-A-R-E-N? L-E-R... No, L-E-I-R-E-N. Mm -hmm. How do you tune up before a show? Do you use a stroke? I tune all my guitars myself. Yeah, I tune... We tune a quarter step down. Uh -huh. So it's like, it's like... It's like this. It's not, it's not a whole, it's not a half step down. It's like, it's right between the cracks. Why do you do that? Um, for vocal reasons. In other words, because when we tour for you're 10 playing months, between the voice an E going. flat and an E. Yeah, quarter tone. Ah, uh, now Hendrix did something like that too. Yeah. But he tuned down all the way to an E flat. So yeah, I used to tune down a D. Uh huh. But then Mike couldn't get his bass tone because he get too much slap. Uh huh. You know. And, uh, so you're a quarter tone below an E. Yeah, it's just... make it hard for someone to play along in, unless they tune. Oh, well, we don't have no keyboard player. No, I meant if somebody was playing along to your record. Oh, yeah. He'd have to tune down yeah. quarter step. So that's cool, too. They don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the truth? It depends. Some songs are tuned standard, some aren't. Ah. See, because I, I never, when we go in the studio, man, I don't stro strobe tune or nothing. I just pick the guitar up, and if it's in tune, I say my tune to me, and we play. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty loose. I mean, why does it have to be the same? Yeah. Who says it has to be tuned to E? Fuck it, you know. Yeah. This is so refreshing to hear somebody say that. Well, I mean, why the rules, you know? Yeah. Fuck the rules. I mean, everything, all the weird shit I do on guitar, I think the reason I'm one guitar player but you still have awards is because I don't do do it by the rules. But you still don't experiment with open tunings. No, because that's kind of ru a rule too. It's been done. Yeah. You know, I don't care too much about things that have been done. Yeah. I mean, I do, but 
You mentioned when we were on the phone that uh, the guitar is designed imperfectly because of the B string. Yeah. Right. Have you ever tried tuning the B string to where you think it would should be? Oh yeah, if you tune it up to. No, each string is tuned in fourth. Yeah. Now that's theoretically right, uh -huh. but you can't play it like that. Yeah, you get all suspended chords just about. But it's in tune all the way across the board like yeah. this. Okay, wait. B sharp. See? Yeah. But like this, it's perfect. Yeah. Not sharp. Yeah. So it's just theoretically built wrong. Yeah. How much time, what time's that say? I can't see it from here. We got plenty of time. 12.20. We're going on Van Halen too. Okay, you know, you're no good. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a, an effect that sounds like a volume pedal at the very beginning. Is that done with the knob of the guitar? Knob of the guitar. Uh huh. Let's go like this. Uh huh. I love the solo on that one too. Yeah. What's your favorite solos that you've recorded? I like Spanish Fly, I like Eruption, I like You Really Got Me, I like uh, I'm the One. I like pretty much all of them, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I like, I like, uh, I like uh, um, something you're just talking about. You're not good. Yeah. Because it almost sounds like a backward solo, you know. Yeah, it does. You know? Yeah. It sounds, I mean, people go, what is it gonna affect? You know, come see me live, Jack. It's normal. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's what I hate. You know, whenever you do something different, they think they immediately it's think it's some, some brand new electro harmonics piece of shit, you know? Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. It's that's what pisses me off. <laughs> and I don't want to come off like, hey, fucker, come see me live. I can do it. Watch, you know? <laughs> Dance the night away. Something in there sounds like a keyboard. Oh. What's that? Harmonics. Oh, that's what we were doing before. Yeah, same I thing. Think that's one of the most beautiful down. spots on there. Yeah, album. and then it goes. It doesn't come out without an amp, though. Mm -hmm. Did you have more sustain on the second album? I thought on the first. Really? Yeah. I thought on the I second. I like the sound of the first album better. Yeah? yeah. Was there a difference in re how it was recorded? Um, I don't think we spent as much time. I mean, we toured from second week in February till December 5th and December 10th we went in the studio. And we didn't spend as much time getting the sound. Uh-huh. Like, I like the guitar sound, but I'm not particularly pleased with the drum sound. I like the drum sound in the first album much better. Yeah. Somebody get me a doctor. I like that solo. Yeah, where did that one go? You hear that volume pedal effect again with the knob? Yeah, it's not a one. pedal, though. It's just... Yeah, but that's what, just what it, people... So you take it all the way up to 10, huh? It's either off or on. Yeah. I never play in between. <laughs> you know, this thing isn't even hooked up. It's yeah. just there for licks, you know. Then it goes. 
Then there's a harmonic thing like this, which doesn't come out at all that way. Let's move closer a bit here. So you 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 hammer it on the record? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so you muffle it, and this right here pings out the harmonics. By just moving your hand up and down the stage. Yeah, the palm or your finger. Uh huh. So as you're hammering, you move, slide your finger up and down the strings. My palm. Your palm. And that brings out all the harmonics. Is that, is that how you pulled off the fast climb at the very end of the song? At the end of the song? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. No, it just ends. Somebody give me a shot. This concludes the second hour of our 1980 interview, portions of which were originally published as Eddie's April 1980 Guitar Player Magazine cover story. Stay tuned for part three. Before signing off, I want to thank my engineer and producer, Nick Hunt, for improving the sound of this 43-year-old tape. This podcast is copyright 2023 by Giles Obrecht. All rights reserved. Catch you next time.